Shalom, shalom, mishpoka. I would like to introduce a new video series called The Ponderings of the Pirkei Avot. Uh, what is The Ponderings of the Pirkei Avot? The Pirkei Avot is a body of rabbinical literature, kind of like a modern uh, rabbinical version, version of uh, the book of uh, Proverbs, perhaps, Mishle. Um, and it is traditional in uh, Jewish communities to read through the entire Pirkei Avot uh, between, um, uh, during the, right after Passover, all the way until the fall festivals begin. And uh, so I would like to just uh, start um, by uh, introducing to you these, these, this new series of videos. Um, my goal in this is to show you how the Pirkei Avot lines up perfectly with many things that Rav Shaul and Yeshua the Messiah taught in the Brit Kadesha because they were from the same school um, per se of rabbis that, that came up with the Pirkei Avot. Now the Pirkei Avot can be found um, in its own volume. Um, in English it's called Ethics of the Fathers. Um, if anybody has a weekday prayer siddur, the Pirkei Avot is usually found in the back. Um, so I hope you enjoy this new uh, series of Pirkei Avot Thoughts, um, you know, the ponderings of the Pirkei Avot, and uh, we'll continue uh, right away in uh, discussing the uh, very first one. Pirkei Avot, chapter 1, verse 1. It says, Moshe received the Torah from, from Sinai and gave it over to Yehoshua, Joshua. Joshua gave it over to the elders, the elders to the prophets, and the prophets gave it over to the men of the great assembly, um, which is sort of like the, the, the uh, Sanhedrin, if you will. Uh, they, the men of the great assembly, would always say uh, these three things, be cautious in judgment, establish many pupils, and make a safe fence around the Torah. Now, who were these elders? In Numbers chapter 11, verse 16 and 17, it says, And Yahweh said unto Moshe, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be elders of the people and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle in the congregation. They may stand uh, there with thee. And I will come down and talk with thee there. And I will take the spirit which is upon thee, and will put it upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people of the people with thee, that thou might not asperse this burden alone. So in other words, uh, Yahweh was establi establishing a divine uh, sort of court system, a Beit Din, a house of judgment within uh, the, the community of Israel, the children of Israel. And uh, so these men would deal with kind of like the small claims per se, and whatever were the big cases that, that they couldn't uh, rule or render judgment on would be kind of Supreme Court cases they would take directly to Moshe. So you see the Sanhedrin, or as the text says, the men of the great assembly, which some, uh, which some of which were prominent rabbis and sages of the academies of the day, and some were actually a part of the Sanhedrin. Uh, this was this was even so in Yeshua's day, and uh, these men of authority can trace their authority and lineage all the way back to Moshe and the leaders uh, that he appointed. Since the destruction of the temple, the chain has been broken, but recently in Israel, the Sanhedrin uh, um, has once more again arose. Yeshua's Sheliachim, or apostles, made up a Messianic Nazarene, Nazari Sanhedrin, if you will, um, and this can be seen in Acts chapter 15 uh, and such. As the Nazarim arise in this modern day, we too need to uni unite the local and national Beit Deans and come up with a, a Nazarim Sanhedrin. Maybe this won't happen until Mashiach returns. Who knows? But I feel strongly that we need to work towards this. After all, the Sanhedrin of Messiah's time had their differences, so there is no reason why today's Nazarene movement cannot have a full, function, full functioning Nazarene Sanhedrin. Some argue that uh, we can't have a Nazarene Sanhedrin because we're not in Israel. One has to be established in Israel. Well, every synagogue, it's every synagogue or every Jewish community's responsibility to form a Beit Din, and these Beit Deans come together to form bigger, bigger great deans, and delegates from those Beit Deans form a Sanhedrin. I don't see no reason why we can't have one here in exile, and uh, before we have one over in Israel. It's better to have one now than to wait, and then later on when we can get a great Netzeri movement in Israel, we can establish a Nazarene Sanhedrin there and maybe send delegates from exile there to, to work on that. So now let's look at a part of this passage. They, the men of the great assembly, would, all, would always say that these three things, be cautious in judgment, establish many pupils, and make a, a safety fence around the Torah. 
One of but many reasons we have a Beit Din and should have a Nazari Sanhedrin is because two heads are better than one. Not once, not one sole person should uh, should make halakha uh, decisions for all the Nazari uh, Nazarene Jews. But a re representative from all arenas need to come together and be heard so that we can hammer out and balance a balanced way for everyone. That is what it means um, to be cautious in judgment. Second, as Yeshua himself commanded, uh, make many Talmudin, you know, uh, make, make many pupils. Yeshua said make many Talmudin, the same thing. Matthew 28, 18, it says, And Yeshua came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all na nations, mikvahing them, <laughs> making them, taking, giving them a mikvah, uh, in the name of uh, the Father, the Son, and the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. What did Yeshua teach? What did he command? The Torah. Nothing but. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. Amen. So third, uh, make a fence around the Torah. Um, you know, what, what is a fence around the Torah? A fence around the Torah is making a commandment that safeguards and protects the original commandment of Torah. Um, so you may tell your child not to touch a stove, and that may be a commandment, but what's stopping him uh, besides your words? Uh, you put up one of those baby safety gates. That's a fence around the commandment you made not to touch the stove. So that helps ensure to make sure that he does not touch a stove. So uh, there are a lot of... Um, uh, okay, so this is no different when, when you're installing software to help you stay away from websites you shouldn't be surfing. Uh, when you put in these, um, you know it's wrong to commit adultery. You know it's wrong to look at pornography or what have you or go to gossip sites or whatever. So if you install programs that keep you from these, that's a fence around the commandment of not to commit adultery. Um, so a, a lot of these uh, fences around the Torah, these extra commandments, are given as safeguards so we won't break the original ones. Though That's well and good, but the problem is we shouldn't ri raise these fences up to a level of the Torah itself. We must realize that they're only traditions, that they're only uh, commandments to safeguard the original commandment. There was a rabbi who said, when you build fences, don't make it so low that you can hop over it, but at, at the same time, don't make it so high so that if the fence should fall, it would crush whatever it's supposed to be protecting. So uh, those are the things that we need to remember when we're dealing with um, uh, making fences around the Torah. So hopefully in, you enjoyed this uh, very first edition of the Ponderings of the Pirkei Avot. Tune in next time and we'll deal with verse 2 of chapter 1 of the Pirkei Avot. Shalom and Shavuot Tov Mishpokah.